ES Audio. Hi, I'm Rochelle Travers, and this is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, is AI the secret to finding aliens? Now, let's get into it. A green comet is making its closest approach to Earth in a once-in-a-lifetime event. This comet, C2022E3ZT, if it doesn't trip off the tongue, is a visitor from the very fringes of the solar system. It's probably taking about 50,000 years to get here. That's Dr. Robert Massey, Deputy Executive Director of the Royal Astronomical Society. The comet is at its closest to Earth officially on the 1st of February, but stays reasonably bright for around a week or two. Essentially, a chunk of rock and ice is that have come near to the sun. And the result of that is that it, it's heating up or heated up and you're getting all these gases and dust streaming off it to make a tail. And it appears green because it's got carbon and cyanogen, you know, fairly toxic chemicals in its nucleus. And they're radiating that color because of the interaction with sunlight. Some have already been able to see the green comet with just the naked eye, but they've done so under very specific conditions. Dr. Massey recommends using binoculars or a telescope to guarantee you'll spot it. Right now, the comet is not far from the pole star, so in the northern sky, the seen from the UK in the northern hemisphere. And it's pretty high, it's up all night, that makes it easy to spot. But you do need to find a chart. There are various of these published online, or you can use apps like Stellarium, it's a free one you can run on your mobile phone. That makes it a lot easier to find. Artificial intelligence could be the secret to the search for alien life. SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, is using machine learning algorithms that filter out earthly interference and spot signals humans might miss. A study used the method to comb through hundreds of hours of radio signals for items of interest. There's no definitive sign of aliens just yet, but it does provide hope for the field, as it can be used on other large amounts of datasets. What's believed to be the world's first and only vagina museum is calling for more to be done to support education around female anatomy, as the site officially closes its doors in London. Half of us have one, most of us came out of one, but most people don't know very much about vaginas and vulvas. A crucial part of our mission is to provide that education, but we do need support to be able to do this. That's Zoe Williams, Development and Marketing Manager at the Vagina Museum. Although they are being forced to shut their location in Bethnal Green, they're looking for another site, so this isn't the end. One of the uh, feedback comments we get most of all from our visitors is, I wish I'd learned this at school. So he said that the stigma around discussing vaginas and the reproductive system is part of the struggle they've been facing to stay open. We once had a comment card from somebody who said that they studied medicine and that they had never got taught any of the uh, anatomy that we were teaching within the museum and that really sticks out to me that even in medical school they're not teaching the anatomy which half the world has. The Vagina Museum will continue to offer educational resources online and on social media until it's able to find a new location. Good news for man's best friend. A cancer treatment looks promising for terminally ill dogs. The research led by the National University of Singapore used technology that modified unspecialized stem cells in canines. The modified cells, according to scientists, carry a potent kill switch that produces a high localized concentration of a cancer-killing drug in the tumor environment and as a result induces immunity. The study suggests that it can not only extend the lives of dogs and preserve good quality of life, but they hope it can also lead to improved treatments for some cancers that affect humans. Let's go to the ads. Coming up, a fairy robot and why AI could spell the end for supermodels. Why not hit rate and follow in the meantime? Welcome back. There's a new Tinkerbell in town. Scientists have developed a fairy-inspired robot that can fly through the air by the power of wind and light. Researchers from Tampere University in Finland have developed the 4mm flying aero robot, which weighs just 1.2 milligrams and resembles a dandelion seed. Inside it, an actuator converts light energy from a laser or LED into kinetic energy, which moves its wings and allows it to fly. The bot could one day act as an artificial dandelion seed loaded up with pollen and steered toward plants that need it. 
A giant ancient sea scorpion species has been discovered in New Mexico that lived over 300 million years ago. Measuring over a meter long, it's thought to have lived in a marine-influenced estuary. The creature belongs to an extinct group of aquatic arthropod invertebrate animals and is likely to have fed on small crustaceans, invertebrate larvae and gastropod eggs. The findings by the team, including the New Mexico Museum of Natural History, are published in the journal Historical Biology. And finally, the Hadid sisters have got some serious competition. Digital humans created by AI are on their way and could replace supermodels. A German company has launched a system that sees state-of-the-art digital humans pose for campaigns. We've never before seen photorealistic quality. The digi models can even be customized to a brand's individual preference. And you thought the fashion industry was superficial before. You're up to date. Come back at 4pm for the Leader Podcast from the Evening Standard. We'll be back tomorrow at 1pm. See you then.